Hey everyone, it's me, Eric Kimball, back here with another video. Today I am in the international headquarters of Planet Whizbang, which is my mail order business, and I am in the process of trying to clean and organize, get a little bit more efficient, because the mail order season will be coming up in another month, month and a half, and I will be very busy here if past years are any indication. I want to show you an idea for over-the-window shelving, but first, I want you to look at me here in this position, and I'm going to show you a picture of what this room looked like three or four years ago before I made it what it looks like now. You can see right here, it was a disaster. This picture, though, doesn't show the room as it really was when it was a workshop. It shows it as I was starting to tear it down in preparation for making it look like this. You can see this is a much nicer space. Now, I want to show you another view. So you're looking now at another angle on this room before, and here I am in the remodeled room as it is today. The door is gone, the tool wall is gone, the big four by eight workbench is gone. Here finally is a third before view. It shows the entrance into this room as it was and here I am in the room as it is now. I liked having a workshop, a woodworking shop here, 24 by 24. It served its purpose when I was in the trades. That's all beside the point. I just wanted to give you some background. And I want to now focus on up there, the shelves over the windows. I used to have a lot of books, a whole lot more books than I have now. And a couple of years ago, I started thinning them out and I decided what I would keep, and I decided that I would keep them on these shelves over the window. That's what these shelves are primarily. They're bookshelves for the books I want to keep, and then, you know, I put other things up there, things that have no real value except to me, you know. Uh, everything in here is uh, sentimental value. You can see the shelves, very simple. It's got, they've got a nice uh, bracket on them, and I'm going to show you how to make that bracket. Now, if I, I pivot around here and you can see that I have a window without a shelf. And I think I did not make shelf there because I had a lot of product uh, piled up here on a pallet. Now, these shelves you see right there, I put in yesterday, trying to get things kind of organized. I'm gonna put one more right down here. And I've got another shelf up here. This shelf is wider. It's got my grandfather's transoceanic radio. That's that. Now let's look around over here. No books there, but I have a, you know, a family heirloom. Right over here is a doorway. It goes into a, a back room, and you can see my old Herrick's home grown. I made that sign for the farm market, and I may move that sign over here, right up in here, and get a shelf over this door. I have uh, almost 10 foot high ceilings, so that's a good thing. I recommend a one by 10 piece of pine, three quarter inch, one by 10 typically is milled down to nine and a quarter inches wide right here. And that's perfect for most books. Here's a large book. It's gonna fit on that shelf just right. And this book will be going up on the shelf. If civilization totally crumbles and you gotta figure out how to survive, this is the book you want. Carla Emery's old fashioned recipe book. She's got what you need in here. I'll tell you how to do about anything you need to know how to do that your grandparents or great great grandparents did every day to get by. So this book though is special to me because it was a wedding gift from a customer. 1980 was the year I had my own business cleaning chimneys and I uh, cleaned the chimney for these people in Ithaca, New York. They lived in a barn and it, it was nice. They had fixed it up real nice, cleaned their chimney, told them I was getting married. And as I was going out to my car, the, the woman uh, came out and she said, this is a wedding gift for you. And it was new at the time. And that was so nice. I had some of the greatest experiences in my 20s with my own business, cleaning chimneys all over this area in upstate New York. But I digress. One by 10. And I have cut this to the length that I want. I have a piece of one by 10 to cut my two brackets out of, the two decorative brackets. This is nine and a quarter inches long, square cut on both ends, and that is how long the bracket is, nine and a quarter inches. So I'll just set my uh, little pattern on there, and then I'll set my pattern on there, 
trace it and cut it out with a jigsaw. I'm going to do that in just a second here. I want you to know though that this uh, bracket, you can make one of these if you like using the pattern that I have at the very end of this video. I do a screenshot with a one inch grid and you can copy this if you like. Okay, so I have traced my pattern onto the wood like you can see right there. Now I'm going to use my jigsaw to cut the brackets out. It would be nice if I had a bandsaw. It would make a nicer cut, uh, a truer cut than jigsaws typically do, but I don't have a bandsaw, so I'm going to use the jigsaw. And it's still going to work out good because uh, we'll, we'll make it good, all right, in the end. Here we go. Okay, uh, good enough for now, you know? I'll cut the other one and I'll show you where we go from here. What I'm gonna do now is route it with a router before I really uh, smooth it up because the router will remove and show a little better what I need to do to make it look as good as possible. Alrighty, that's like a uh, maybe a quarter inch, maybe three eighths inch round over. I've got here my sandpaper rasp. I like this a lot. I'm gonna hit that right there. Get the profile to my satisfaction where it's kind of uh, not, not looking good. I think I've about got it right there as far as roughing it and getting the profile better. Now I just go over it again with the router. What I'll do is I'll finish up with some sandpaper. I got some 100 grit here. And I can uh, hand sand that. The uh, brackets and shelves in my shop there, you'll notice that they were not painted or finished. It's because I was in a rush and because it's like my shop, you know, it's not in my house. Yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty nice. I'm happy with it. Well, once it's painted, if I were to ever paint it, which I probably never will. Looking good, right there. All righty, well, here I am hooked up with my overhead view, which is quite a trick. I've got uh, my tripod wired up with uh, scraps of Romex. What I'm going to do here, these are my finished brackets, and there's a band on the top of uh, my window. And I could cut that band out and slide this right in, or I can notch around the band. You'll see what I mean when I go to put this in. I'm going to notch around it because that's what I did with the other ones. I measured uh, three and a half. That's how big that top, uh, one, two, three, and then three quarters, okay? Three and a half. This'll, you'll see what I mean if, if you don't understand at this point. One, two, three, three quarter. Okay, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll mark that out for cutting with the jigsaw again. It is about seven eighths of an inch, right there, close enough. It's not rocket science. It's close enough, and we'll round it a little. All right, and methinks I should get my rat tail file here and just get that rounded a little in the corners. Okay. There we go. Yeah, good enough. So here's our shelf, and I'm going to put screws in the back of the shelf into the head casing. All right, and they're going to be uh, centered. The head casing is three quarter thick. I've just gauged uh, halfway, three eighths of an inch. And there we have our three eighths of an inch line. And we'll, uh, let's see, this is 32 and an eighth. So we'll go 16 
or 32 and a quarter will go 16 and an eighth. So there's the screws that are going to go in the back. I'll use the, uh, the countersink bit right there and we'll pre-drill these. Now, what length screws will I use in there? Well, uh, I kind of general rule of thumb is that the length of the screw uh, into this wood here would be twice the thickness of what you're going through. So we would use two and a quarter inch screws. If we had them, I don't. I have two inch screws and that's what I'm going to use. That's the top of the shelf right there. And these brackets are gonna go on the bottom, okay? Now I have pre-measured. I just filmed a whole segment from the ceiling down and it showed pretty much nothing except the top of my hat. So uh, this is, I'm working out the kinks here on these uh, little shop videos and that's something I gotta get better at. But suffice it to say that uh, you just attach your bra brackets here. I got two screws through the top. The brackets are inset here the thickness of the casing on the window, which is three quarters of an inch. All right, set these back three quarters of an inch. Uh, two screws in the top, two inch screws. I've got the screws here. I've got the screws, one screw in the bottom of each bracket, right there and there. And uh, all these screws are set so that the points are just, just touching through a little bit. So it's, it's ready to go in, it's ready to uh, install. And if I've measured everything out right, it will install very easily. Let's go give it a try. All right, let's see what we got here. Looks pretty good. Getting it centered here. It looks like I measured right. They're both in the center. I'm gonna screw the top on first. That sounds good. Come on now. Try that again. Oh yeah, looking good. That is like a rock. And we'll put these in here. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, we're looking good. We'll get our first book. Carl Amory's Old Fashioned Recipe Book. Thanks for watching, everybody. This was a tough video for some reason, but uh, I got through it, and I hope you got through it with me. I'll see you in the next one.